Tell us a little bit about North by El Norte. Does this mean that you're moving up to Canada because Trump is president? What's the deal with this title, honey? El North by El Norte is uh, about a young man who wants to uh, cross the frontera, come across the border to uh, help his family send money back and uh, everybody's you can't do it. No, no, no lo puede hacer. And me, Uncle John, I'm the only one that says, si se puede, you know, do it, you know. You just put it very lightly though, because I have a feeling that, you know, when you say si se puede, there's some sort of like swashbuckling, some guns or some machetes here involved. Are you a violent man in this movie is what we want to know. At the end, I got to take care of some business, but. Know them, love them, understand them, teach and respect them, but most of all, Defend him. Bondo is a family man who is looking to better his life for him and his family and he's pursuing the American dream and like most people going north end up in Tijuana, Mexico where uh, we meet uh, Julian who's the sort of uh, representation of uh, some of the corrupt Mexican government officials. He's a police officer who sort of prevents him from moving forward. And there's just a lot of um, walls, uh, per se, um, for Bondo, for him to try and get over. So he builds this flying contraption and he's like gonna fly over the border, over the walls. Nice. So it doesn't matter how big you build them walls, someone like Bondo's gonna figure out how to get over it. Spraying working with Mark Christensen, the director. Mark is eccentric. He's very talented. I knew from the first film I saw prior to accepting this role that he had a great eye. He was definitely going to be very creative. And a lot of the shots in the film uh, that I love are all I know from Mark's vision. I used to restore quite a few cars and was doing that down in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, I met a, a young man who had the dream of coming here and uh, uh, he was an upholstery guy and uh, he says, see you later Marcos, I'm going to the mountain. So I thought, okay, he's going. Seven years later, I, I went back to the same shop to get a, a seat done and, and, he, and, and he crawls out from under the sewing machine bench where he sleeps and he says, oh hey Marcos, I do your seats. I go, what, what, what happened? I thought, I thought you went to the mountain. He goes, oh. So I thought very inspirationally uh, from this guy's dream that I would write this story about what the uh, Mexicans are like in Tijuana trying to get a life here in America. The film was an interesting uh, evolution. The writing process is different than the filming process, and you have this other character in mind the whole time you're writing. Uh, and we knew Danny was going to come on the set a week before shooting, so we had to really just look at what we were getting and apply it to the film. Um, so rather than to tweak the character the what I had in mind, just this guy was just already giving a whole lot more than, than, a, than a developed character off the script, so I, I just went with that. What's wrong with Mexico, huh? There is no money here. I mean, they got plenty of it in America. I see you have that dream. It's like a long time ago, Cesar Chavez used to say, si se puede, you know, yes we can. And I think that's one of the things that's embedded in this kid's mind, is that, uh, you know, I can do this, man. I can do this for my family, you know. And, uh, and Uncle John, he's the one that's kind of like, yeah, go do it, you know. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is, I would rather shoot for the moon and miss than aim for the gutter and make it. So he's shooting for the moon. I'm
farther you guys couldn't stop laughing when you guys are shooting the movie. <laughs> Every single day, <laughs> uh, you know, on sets, uh, it, it's all—it's always about putting out fires because every day there's a fire. Not not literally, but in, in the sense of something goes wrong. Uh, especially since uh, in this film we have a flying contraption that the director built himself, uh, and a lot of the stunts that we did. Um, so yes, there there were a lot of. Uh, Great moments, uh, you know, crew staying in a hotel in Tijuana, Mexico. There was a lot of fun. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> hey, Bondo. Do you read English? A little bit. What's this? Oh, man. It's a kind of airplane. Yeah, to fly with. Yeah, you make one of those to fly. You're not planning going to the border, are you? Do you think I can? It's impossible. You kill yourself. Uh, the flying stuff is all real. I think it's a couple of special effects shots, but you can't tell. And uh, it, it was difficult to get the weather to be right. I think we had a two-hour window. God gave us a two-hour window to go up there and shoot. It was really uh, stormy before, really stormy afterwards. Uh, that was the most difficult part of shooting, was gathering the filming. It was going to be a, a, a five million dollar insurance policy here to do it in the LA River. So we went down to Tijuana and they just gave us a uh, universal filming permit. Do it. <laughs> Watch, was, yeah, just do it, I guess. And uh, it, it was awesome. We, were, we flew around for two hours ga gathering these shots. But I, I did notice there was a police officer down below when we were shooting trying to capture the other flying machine. I guess he wanted to just be a part of the scene and oh, say, okay. what are you doing flying over my city kind of stuff. It's really awesome. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Bondo! As appropriate as it seems, there, there was no issues when, when the script was written years ago. You know, there was no real border issues or anything on, on TV, so it's just, really strange and ironic how it's coming to be um, very topic at the time. Yeah, where the grass is greener. Mm, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> you know, I always wanted to build a wall to keep the Americans out. What are you guys going for next year? Are you guys going to do another movie or? I'm waiting for him. <laughs> I, I plan on working on something. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, I, and I plan on being there. <laughs> Fiddle success, motherfucker. I love making movies that are labors of love. You know, it's like we have the real big studio movies and you kind of get lost in the in the dollar figure and the, the money and the trailers and everything. And when you have a, 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 low, a low budget, no budget movie, it's like everybody's just kind of pitching in and helping. And I think that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, that's the people that really love making movies, you know, not the people that are just in it for the business. Hey man on that. My ultimate favorite thing about the film is the soundtrack. I just love the soundtrack of this film. I play it all the time. I have it on my iPhone, <laughs> and I just uh, love Mark Killian. Mark Killian <laughs> uh, uh, is is really great, and uh, I just love the soundtrack for this movie. So, thank you, Mark. <laughs> they should just make Mexico into America. No. They should make America into Mexico. You have kids? You, uh, you have a wife? Are you single? Are you ready to make it? What's the deal with that? I'm single. I have three kids, and my kids won't let me mingle. They, they won't let you mingle? Yeah. Are they very, like, jealous with you? No, not jealous. They're just, uh, saying, you know, married four times is not oh. dead. <laughs> is that more than Elizabeth Taylor? I'm not sure. No, she got six. She got six? Okay. You're almost there. You're almost there, Daddy. This side, Mexico, that side, America. This side, pretty girls. That side, alimony. So any, any message you want to give it to the people? 
this movie is going to warm your heart. It's going to show you what Familia is all about. And uh, if she's not married, I'm going to get her phone number. Oops. <laughs> <laughs>